All right, ladies and gentlemen, three o'clock. Welcome back to your favorite class. Yes, your favorite class. Okay, simulation two, due today. Got it in. Good job. Uh, I see some complaining about the next upcoming simulation. David, I promise this one's not as bad. It's not, I promise. There's a lot of equations which might take a little time to enter into MATLAB, but this one's a lot easier. There's no difficult conceptual stuff. There's no angles to deal with. I promise this next one's a lot easier. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look at quickly what we have left for the class. I'll put you back on this little uh, scheduler thingy here. Uh, again, simulation two is due today. Rema remaining material from the course. Here we are, week nine, not a lot left. All right, got one more simulation, which is on linkages. And I'm telling you the linkage analysis you don't want to do by hand anyways. All right, so MATLAB, get thee to the MATLABs. Uh, homework number six on gears. We'll talk about gears next week, and that will be due uh, approximately two weeks from today. And that one should be pretty straightforward. Gears are pretty simple, what we do in this class. Uh, and then your exam for the class, exam number three, is Thursday, May 21st. That exam will not be cumulative. It's just going to be on the stuff that we've covered most recently. So that's like momentum and the gears and the linkages. So exam number three is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm not going to try to throw any curveballs at you. Generally, I've been like very happy and very proud of the way that you guys have like come through in this crazy situation. Like everyone's doing their homework. Everyone's doing their simulations. Like um, everyone's coming to class. Nobody's failing. Like, God damn, you guys are crushing it. Right. I'm like really proud of you. So only like two and a half weeks left. Just keep it going. We're almost done. All right. So. That's that. Also, how do we like the meme today? Another student submitted meme. Yes. All right. Student submitted meme. So long, calculus. I survived. The worst is over. Not so fast, says Mr. Thermo. And rawr, not so fast, says Mr. Fluids. All right. He's got the bat from Breaking Bad there. The little spikes in it. Yikes. Or not Breaking Bad. Oh, what's the show on, on AMC? Uh, Walking Dead. That's it. Yes. All right. Back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. Let's remind ourselves where we were and sort of pick up where we left off. So if we remember, we were on <laughs> calculus. <laughs> oh, by the way, happy Cinco de Mayo. Taco Tuesday, so you better get out there and, uh, and eat some tacos, okay? Ole! All right. So away we go. Back to what we were discussing before. Let me get you over to the pad. All right. So we were talking about linkages. And let's remind ourselves what the linkage looks like. Because I forgot. It's been too long. I forget. I'm old. All right. Here's your linkage. This is what it looks like. All right. We created a model of this using our position vectors in kind of a complex plane that would help us to sort of solve for positions and velocities of this particular guy. And so here's the model that we were working with last week. I kind of drew this model by hand, uh, but there's a nice picture of it in the notes and also in the supplementary textbook for the course, which is where I got this particular figure. All right. So here's our general model. We have link lengths A, B, C, and D. And these correspond to position vectors that help us locate various points in this particular link chain. Okay, so here we have like this link length A associated with position vector R2. Oh, terrible. Oh my God. Still makes me mad. All right, but anyways, yes, A goes with R2, B goes with R3, C goes with R4, and this link length D goes with R1. And we're going to assume that we know what these are. All right. We also have some positions on this particular link, namely what would be like theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4, these angular positions. And we'll say that the angular position theta 2 is also known. We're going to assume that we know theta 2 because this is the driving link. All 
All right. What I mean by that is that we're going to assume in this particular situation that this link is sort of being driven by a motor. Okay, and this will come up a little bit later. Uh, and so this link generally we'll call the driving link. All right. And so with that particular information at hand, we want to solve for the positions of the other links, which is like theta three and theta four. So these are the alternate positions of these particular links. All right, all of this combined here, solving for like theta three and theta four, we would generally call like the position analysis. Right, because we know things about the various link lengths, we know the angle of the driving link, and we're looking for what would be these positions of the additional links as well, the theta three and the theta four. And we get this with the position analysis. And the position analysis really starts with what is known as the vector loop equation. Which is basically the equation that represents the vector addition that makes up our model of these particular links. And that vector loop equation is R2 plus R3 is equal to R4 plus R1. If we kind of go back to our model here and we look at what I'm talking about here, this is like R2 plus R3 gets me to this position here, B. And similarly, R1 plus R4 also gets me to B. So this is my vector loop equation. Uh, oftentimes it is written in a rearranged fashion. It's something like R2 plus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equals zero. All right. So this vector loop equation is useful and that it sort of confines or constrains the positions of all of our particular links. And we rewrote this vector loop equation using complex notation as something like it was something like a e to the j theta two. Yes, a goes with theta two plus b e to the j theta 3 minus c e to the j theta 4 minus d equals 0. Right. This was our vector loop equation in complex notation. <clears throat> and the unknowns here, this particular equation, theta 3 and theta 4. All right. This is two equations in the real and imaginary space. All right, so like the X and the Y dimensions, but here we're in the real and complex plane. So it's two equations in the real and imaginary space and you can solve simultaneously these two equations for theta three and theta four. All right, so to jog your memory, it was something like theta three we had two solutions, which I'll talk about in just a second. Theta three, one and two is tangent inverse of a bunch of stuff. And also you had theta four, one and two is tangent inverse of a bunch of stuff. All right, and so it's a lot of algebraic constants more or less that live in what is this junk here. And I sort of spelled it all out on the writing pad last week, and also it's in your notes. So I'm just kind of jog your memory here. All right, so we had theta three and theta four, which popped out from that general vector loop equation in complex notation. We noticed that when we did this, we had two solutions possible for each one of the theta threes and theta fours. Right. These two solutions, here and here, correspond to two configurations of the linkage. which we called open 
and closed or crossed. Uh, crossed is kind of the conventional term, but I would say people more often use the word closed to describe it. All right, open and closed, right? Just like a freaking door, okay? Open and closed, just like the case. The case is shut. All right, open and crossed. So we drew a model of what the open and cross configurations might look like, but pictures are always helpful. So let's put a picture in here. So pictorially, that looks something. Move. All right, well, I guess it's stuck where it is. You will move now. OK, well, I guess it's stuck where it is. All right, so pictorially, this is what we got, where we have these two configurations. All right, this first link is being driven, and it does not change. OK, it's in this particular position. We're told what the angle of theta 2 is because it's the driving link, remember? So driving link. Here, and so with that in mind, we have these two different configurations that we could have for this particular linkage. The first is the general model that we had, which is kind of showing this open configuration, where the open configuration has angles associated with uh, theta three and theta four, which are like here and here. Right. So those angles are kind of associated with the open configuration, and Alternatively, you could have a situation where the linkages are kind of crossing over themselves. They got two left feet, all right? If linkages had left feet, the cross configuration, they'd be tripping over themselves, two left feet. All right, here's your cross configuration. We're assuming that these links are not going to interfere with each other in this kind of planar dimension, that there's thickness into the page to allow them to rotate at, at, at will. And so with this closed configuration, you have different values of theta 4 and theta 3. So open configuration here uses like theta 3, 1 and theta 4, 1, which, you know, this figure uses theta 3 and theta 4. And then the crossed configuration uses theta 3, 2 and theta 4, 2, or in this figure, what you see as theta 3 prime and theta 4 prime. All right, that's the general idea. So we did all of this last Friday, talked about this, looked at the position analysis, and that's where we are. After position analysis is over, You have the following. You'll have A, B, C, D, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 3 prime, and theta 4 prime. All right? So those all, all of these things will be known. All right. So this is about where we left off last time. Now, once the full position analysis has been done, we can take the next step. And the next step is the velocity analysis. RAR. And that's where we're gonna, gonna pick up with new material today. All right, so with the velocity analysis, um, it's going to proceed in a very similar manner, right? We're going to assume that we know everything from the position analysis. We also need to assume one additional piece of information, and that is that we have the angular velocity of the driving link.
that angular velocity is omega 2. So we're going to assume that we have the angular velocity of this first link here, which is omega 2. It's that driving link in this particular piece. It's driving the configuration. It's driving the speed. All of these things are important. And usually in real life, this link would be driven by some motor, like I said. All right, so we've got this link that's driving the linkage. So we have omega 2. All right, that's where we're going to begin. And we're going to, like I said, approach it in the same way. So again, we'll use vector loop equation. Remember that is like R2, D2. No, just kidding. R2, R3 equal R4 plus R1, which we've rearranged into R2 plus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equals zero. Or generally, we could write this in our complex notation. A e to the j theta 2 plus B e to the j theta 3 minus C e to the j theta 4 minus D equal to 0. Remember that theta 1 is 0, so e to the 0 is 1. I'm kind of dropping the additional what would be here like e to the j theta 1 because theta 1 is 0. All right. So in a complex notation, here we are. This is a vector representation of the positions of our linkages in this vector loop chain. OK, well, what we want to do now, if we have position vectors, is we want to take the derivative to get the velocity. So for velocity, we take time derivative. So we want to go here and take the time derivative. So let's do it. Results in the following. So if I take the time derivative of this, I again will sort of be using the chain rule where I take the derivative with respect to theta, then multiply by d theta dt. So this guy is going to look here something like a j e to the j theta 2 times d theta 2 dt. Again, this back bit results from the chain rule plus b j e the j theta 3 times d theta 3 dt minus c j e to the j theta 4 times d theta 4 dt equal to zero. I've dropped this d here because d is a constant value. It does not change with time. So the time derivative of a constant is zero. So here is your resulting velocity equation in the most simple sense. All right. I'm going to come back to this. I'll call it equation number one. All right. This is the velocity equation. Let's identify some things that we see here. All right. Pretty easy to understand that d theta 2 dt is what we typically call like omega 2. d theta 3 dt is what we'll typically call omega 3. d theta 4 dt is what we'll typically call omega 4. Where omega 2, omega 3, and omega 4 are the angular velocities of the various lengths. Okay. So in this particular figure here, like this guy is rotating around with omega 2, this guy is rotating around with omega 3, and this guy is rotating around with omega 4. This guy, he doesn't rotate. All right, he's fixed. He's chilling. All right, omega 1 is 0, if you want to write that. All right, obviously, frankly. All right. So that's your general relationship or general equation there. So let's rewrite this with a little bit friendlier form. So it will be a j omega 2 e to the j theta 2 plus b 
J, E to the J. Three. Oh, I missed my omega. P, J, omega three, E to the J. Three minus C, J, omega four, E to the J. Omega four equal to zero. All right, so again, <clears throat> another equation that is representing our velocity, but now with terms and terminology that we kind of understand. <clears throat> Reminder, this equation is two equations, one in the real direction and one in the imaginary direction. All right. Let's look at some of these things that we can sort of see. All right, so omega two, obviously we understand that's angular velocity. This whole term here, a j omega two e to the j theta two. This is the velocity of point a. All right. Give you a second if you're kind of copying this down. We talked about this before uh, when we really introduced the derivatives of position in the complex coordinate system. That this is the velocity of a. So if we roll all the way back up here. Here we're looking at this particular piece of this chain. Let's not use red, let's use blue. We're looking at this particular piece in the chain and we took the derivative of that position vector, which is gonna give us the velocity of this particular point here, point A, all right? So we can do a similar thing is if we have this position vector here, we're gonna get the velocity of point B but we'll get the velocity of point B relative to point A, okay? Because we have defined this position vector with A as the base, all right? So if we take the time derivative of R3, we're going to get the position vector or the velocity vector B relative to A. Similar idea here, if we take the time derivative of this position vector R4, we're going to get the velocity of B. And since here point O4 is fixed, we'll just get up the straight, straight up velocity of B. So what I mean here is that this term, yes, is the velocity of A. Why does it keep doing that? This term here in our equation is the velocity of B relative to A. And this term here is the velocity of B. Right. So you can convince yourself of that by looking at the position vectors and taking the individual derivatives of the position vectors to give you these general ideas. But in a little bit more simplistic understanding, you might see this uh, as like VA plus VB relative to A minus VB equal to zero. This is a little bit easier to understand possibly, or with rearranged VA plus VBA equals VB. This might also be a a helpful equation for you to think about. All right, the velocity of point A plus the velocity of B relative to A has to equal the velocity of B. This is a useful equation. Your book has a pretty nice picture of what these equations represent. So let's get that picture in here and we'll see if we can match up our equations with what's happening pictorially. And that is this general figure here. Okay. What is that? What are you doing? This stupid thing. All right, I'm having technical difficulties here with the, my pictures today. There, dang it. All right, so here we are pictorially, all right? Now we've included velocity components, so our picture is getting a little bit more involved, but I think we can kind of follow this or, or understand what's going on here. Let's first look at this uh, first link in the chain, all right, the link that's defined by the variable little a. So this is the driven link, all right, it's the one being driven. We're going to have some angular velocity of this guy, omega 2, and since this is the driving link, this is unknown value, omega 2. We also know what theta 2 is, right? So that'll be some information 
in this particular case, omega two is being shown in the general counter or the general clockwise position. So we know if we do something like omega here cross this r, we're going to end up with a velocity of point a that is perpendicular to that. All right. So you see that velocity at a resulting where we know that here this is sort of a right angle because of the cross product that we've executed. All right. A very similar idea here for point B relative to point A. Here you've got the angular velocity of link number three, and it's kind of assumed in this positive position here. So if we make that general assumption, then we can say if point A is fixed, then omega three cross R three will give us the velocity of B relative to A, which again is this perpendicular relationship, right? Similar thing with position vector number four. If we want the absolute velocity of B, so not relative to point A, then we can take R4 and we can take the angular velocity of this position vector number four, do the cross product of those guys, and you'll end up with this velocity vector here. So if we sort of take these three guys, these three velocities, we sort of arrange them in the triangle, like the book has kind of done at right here, you can sort of see this general relationship hold that the velocity of A plus the velocity of B relative to A is equal to the velocity of B. And that is the velocity of A here plus the velocity of B relative to A here must be equal to the velocity of B, which is here. So we see this vector addition pictorially, which shakes out from the complex math that kind of came up here after we did the derivative of the position vectors. So everything is cool. Everybody's happy. We're all hunky dory. Pictorially, this makes sense. Mathematically, this all makes sense. So let's get back to it. So this is what we uh, got going on pictorially. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper on what's going on with the math in equation number two. So remember, up here was equation number two. Back to two. All right, remember equation two? Here, I'll just rewrite it because I can. I'm the teacher, I'll do what I want. All right, so back to equation number two, you had something like uh, j a omega two e to the j theta two plus j b omega three e to the j theta three minus j c omega four e to the j theta four all equal to zero and remember here we have this is two equations all right one in the imaginary space and one in the real space all right it's just like i and j components all right here we have imaginary and real components and so imaginary and real components and the unknowns are something like omega three and omega four. All right, so here we are. We've got two equations, two unknowns, and the only unknowns that we really have here are omega three and omega four, because we're assuming we have theta three and theta four from the position analysis. Also, theta two and omega two are given because that particular link is, is driving the system. All right, if that's the case, you can rewrite this using Euler's formula. Which looks something like J A omega two times cosine theta two plus J sine theta two plus J B omega three times cosine theta three plus j sine theta three minus j c omega four cosine theta four plus j sine theta four equal to zero. So we have real and imaginary components here that are gonna pop out. So let's look at the real and the imaginary directions to sort of suss out what's going on here. So real direction, Let's say real in quotes here. 
when I look at the real direction, I have to distribute the J's that are hanging out front. So we see the J's that are hanging out front. I'm going to have to redistribute them into these parentheses. And when I do that, I'll distribute to the J that's in front of the sine theta 2. And so J times J will get me a negative 1. And so what looks like the imaginary component will turn into the real component once that J gets distributed. So for instance, the first bit here, I'll have like J omega 2 times J sine theta 2 will give me a negative A omega 2 sine theta 2. So here in the real direction, negative A omega 2 sine theta 2. Similar here, I distribute the J to this J, I'll get a negative 1. It's going to turn into a real component. We have a minus B omega 3. Don't, don't forget your omega-3s. Keep you, keep you safe and, and happy. All right, that fish oil, lots of omega-3. And then the last bit here, distribute my J to this J. You get a negative 1, but I've got a negative out front. So I'll end up with a positive C omega-4 sine theta-4 all equal to 0. Here now my imaginary direction. Similar idea here is that my J gets distributed in to this cosine here. So we'll see a cosine theta 2 pop itself up in the imaginary direction with a positive in front of it. So here we'll have A omega 2 cosine theta 2 plus B omega 3s. There they are again, fish oil cosine theta 3 minus C omega 4 cosine theta 4 equal to 0. So here we are, separated our two equations from each other, one in the real direction, one in the imaginary direction. Now we have to solve these simultaneously for omega 3 and omega 4. Now I have to remind myself that these linkages can have two configurations, an open configuration and a crossed configuration. So when I execute this portion of the analysis, I would expect two values of omega-3 and two values of omega-4. That's because the angular velocities of the links in the open configuration will be different than they are in the cross configuration. Okay? It just like makes sense physically. If I go back up to my open versus cross configurations here, and I look at, all right, what is the angular velocity of this guy going to be? Well, it's going to be a lot different than whatever it is in its alternate configuration, which is like whatever angular velocity this guy has going on. All right. So I'm going to expect two values for each one of these different entries. The way that those two values come about and pop up is by using different values of theta 3 and theta 4. All right, that's the general idea. So after solving simultaneously, we have the following results. And that is that omega-3 is your very healthy fish oil is equal to A omega-2 on B all multiplied by sine theta-4 minus theta-2 over sine of theta 3 minus theta 4, just what you expected. All right. For omega 3, 1, use theta 3, 1 and theta 4, 1. For omega 3, 2, use theta 3, 2 and theta 4, 2. All right. 
So if you want the angular velocity associated with the open configuration, use theta 3, 1, theta 4, 1. If you want the angular velocity associated with the cross configuration, use theta 3, 2 and theta 4, 2. Right? The two solutions corresponding to the crossed configuration. Right? Just makes sense, right? Okay. So that's for omega 3. And you get a similar looking expression for omega 4, uh, slightly different. A omega 2 here now on C times sine theta 2 minus theta 3 divided by sine theta 4 minus theta 3. When I was your age, I had to derive this. It was horribly bad. I cried for three weeks. I didn't come out of my room. I only ate ramen noodles. Sounds like sounds like right now. Okay. All right, same idea, uh, but for omega four one and omega four two. All right. So the values of omega, which is the angular velocities of the links given the various configurations can be solved using these equations appropriately. Remember, we have everything on the right right hand side here. This is assumed known, the value of the drive, the angular velocity of the driving link. We know the link lengths, A, C, and up here, B. We know all these angles after we do our position analysis. Those guys are all known. So everything on the right hand side of these equations is known. Angular velocities are now assumed to be known. They're solved for. Now, if you want linear velocities of each one of the pins, just plug these original values back into their equations. Now, with omega 3 and omega 4 known, the velocity of A is going to be here. Make sure I get this right. Uh, J, A, omega 2, e to the J, theta 2. This is what we wrote originally. Or if I rewrite this using Euler's equation, this is J, A, omega 2, cosine theta 2 plus J, sine theta 2, or if I distribute the J appropriately, this is A omega 2 times negative sine theta plus J cosine theta. So there is your velocity of point A. All right. Similarly, the velocity of B relative to A was given by J B omega 3 E to the J theta 3, which if you work through this in the same sort of manner, you'll have B omega 3 negative sine theta 3 plus j cosine theta 3. Oh, I forgot my twos here. Don't forget your twos. They're terrible. They're terrible twos. All right. Finally, you have that the velocity of b is j, c, e, j, theta 4 times omega 4. Simplifying, velocity of b is going to be c times omega 4 multiplied by negative sine theta 4 plus j cosine theta 4. There you go. Rawr! Velocities. Yes. 
Hopefully we get the general idea. Remember, two solutions for each of that and that. All right, the velocity of point B in the open configuration different than the velocity of point B in the cross configuration. The velocity of B relative to A in the open configuration different than the velocity of B relative to A in the cross configuration. All right, so two solutions for each of these guys. This guy up here, only one solution. And that's because there's only one theta two, there's only one omega two. All right. Okay, so that's it for today. Catch you out, you know, a couple minutes early so you can relax and stop crying from all the math that I just wrote on the paper. Stop crying. Stop it. No crying. All right. There's no crying in engineering. No, I'm just kidding. There's lots of crying in engineering. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, I'll keep this up. I'll stick around for questions. You can get going on uh, the next simulation if you want to give it a go. It's next Friday. Um, you don't have any homework on linkages. The homework is replaced by the simulation. Okay, so there you go. Uh, thanks for coming. We'll see you guys later. You're welcome, Jess. Rawr. Stay happy, stay sane. Hey, Dr. Hart, I got a question. So, for the velocity in B, I Alan, see any. Are you attempting to talk? I cannot hear you. All right, one thing. Are, are you trying to talk here? I, I, I can't hear you. I don't know what's going on, but do um, you want to type something in the chat? Do you want to try a separate call? Let's try a separate call. Okay, I'll call you.